Welcome to this, the First United Methodist Church of Upland, California. We share in our worship today, this is the third Sunday of Advent, and so it is the Sunday of joy. We had hope and peace and now joy. Uh, and when I think about joy at Christmas time, I think about the angels. Because we read in our Gospels that the angels came to shepherds, simple shepherds in the field, and, uh, and said they bring good news of a great joy that shall come to all people. And, uh, and that joy is for all of us. So, so as we celebrate today, as, as we worship together, we give thanks to, to our Lord in the great joy that is ours. Let's be in worship.
I will sing a new song. The old song of my spirit has worried itself out. It has long ago been learned by the heart. It repeats itself over and over, bringing no added joy to my days or lift to my spirit. I will sing a new song. I must learn the new song for the new needs. I must fashion new words, born of all new growth of my life, of my mind, of my spirit. I must prepare for new melodies that have never been mine before. That all that is within me may lift my voice unto God. Therefore, I shall rejoice with each new day. And delight my spirit in each fresh unfolding. I will sing this day a new song unto the Lord. We draw closer to Christmas. As we light this candle of joy, may our hope be renewed that Christ will be born again in our lives this Christmas time. Let us pray. Eternal God, through long generations, you prepared a way in our world for the coming of your Son. And by your Spirit, you are still bringing the light of the gospel to darkened lives. Renew us so that we may welcome Jesus Christ to guide our thoughts and claim our love. Amen. So one of my favorite treats for Christmas and eh, pretty much any time is a candy cane. You know, all those weird flavors and stuff. One of the best ones, of course, is Logan's in Ontario. They have the best candy canes ever. And every once in a while I get those. Um, but they are, I, I don't even care if they're broken. I will eat them anyway. So a candy cane is also a symbol for Christmas. We have red and white stripes. The red is for the blood that Jesus uh, died for us, the white that he washed away the sin and is pure. And then there's the shape of a candy cane, a J for Jesus. But this is like a shepherd's hook. Jesus shepherding us as his sheep, as his followers. Well, that's what our little candy cane symbolizes. And that's the legend. The legend was is that there was somebody in the 1800s that wanted to have the kids remember what Christmas was and about Christianity, <clears throat> but they weren't allowed to talk about it. So we hid it in a candy cane. You have a great week. I know I gave you one of these. Hopefully you get to eat it and eat lots of them this Christmas. They are delicious. Have a great week. We come now to our time of Shalom when we lift prayers of uh, peace and wholeness uh, on each other. Uh, we, uh, we give thanks for the Lord uh, as uh, we face so many challenges. Uh, one of the great challenges of this past week was the, the, the loss of Grace 
bold one on uh, as uh, she passed into the hands of of God. Uh, and so uh, we lift up Bonnie and the family uh, as uh, as they uh, endure this loss even at such a time. Uh, we lift our nation. Uh, we lift our community before the Lord. Let us be in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks even in such challenges. We give you thanks, knowing that you are present, knowing that your Holy Spirit surrounds us. Give us, give us what we need to be able to, to greet life with joy even in our loss. Help us remember, Lord, that you are there uh, and that even in deepest loss, that we, that we are in your hands. Lord, we, uh, we do lift up the families of those uh, who are, are suffering and those who, who have passed into glory. We uh, lift them before you, praying that you would surround them with uh, the comfort of your grace. Lord, we give you thanks for the beauty of this creation. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the joy of being able to share with our loved ones, with family, with friends. We ask that, that you would open our eyes to see what you would have us do and be. As you walk beside us, Lord, point us in your direction. Help us to receive your guidance that we truly might be people of your peace and that that joy that, that you bring, that we would be able to, to share that with everyone we meet. Lord, help us, lead us, guide us. We ask, Lord, that you be with this church, that as we reach out in, in ministry and caring to those in need, that, uh, that we would be in, inspired to, to give all that is necessary. Help us, Lord, find those, those places the, where the, the need is deep. And Lord, use us to be a blessing to others. We ask these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My name is Evelyn Campbell, and I'm going to read the scripture today, the gospel according to John, verses 14 through 23. This is the Revised Standard Version. 
and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. John bore witness to him and cried, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, for he was before me. And from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has made him known. And this is a testimony of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed. He did not deny, but confessed. I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. They said to him then, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. So endeth the reading. Let us again be in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for your presence with us at all times, in all challenges. Lord, we know you are there. We ask that you would uh, open our hearts that we truly might have the joy that only you can bring. In the name of our Savior, amen. When I was in elementary school, we moved to Calexico, which is in the middle of the desert. Uh, and that first Christmas, I was in first grade. Uh, I uh, had a, a sudden uh, um, worry because I realized there was no fireplace. It's in the middle of the desert, no fireplace. And I said, Mom, there's no fireplace. And she said, yeah. And I said, well, here's the problem. How is Santa going to get in to bring presents? And she said, Santa has a magic key. And so any house that doesn't have a fireplace, Santa can use his magic key and get in. And I said, oh. And I suddenly realized that this was my opportunity to catch him because the front door was on one side of the living room and the Christmas tree was on the other side. And so I said, I'm going to sleep on the couch tonight. And my mom just smiled and said, okay, you sleep on the couch. And so that Christmas Eve, I slept on the couch and I was going to catch Santa. And uh, um, the next morning, the stockings were filled. There were special presents under the tree that said Santa. And I know that I did not wake, uh, I did not go to sleep all through the night. I know I stayed awake and I didn't see him. And so I became a great witness for Santa. I told all my friends the story, and they were all very impressed that I had proof that Santa existed. Uh, when, uh, when, when, when my own daughter, uh, Rebecca, uh, was uh, again in elementary school, and Brianna and Daniel, a number of years behind her, and uh, three and four, and uh, uh, she came to talk to me about Santa, and I said, well, one thing you need to remember is that if nobody believes in Santa, then Santa does not bring presents. And she looked at me very knowingly and said, okay, Dad. And she became the best witness for Santa. <laughs> the little ones 
Um, they, uh, they were very impressed with her. John is a witness for Jesus Christ. Last week, uh, we looked at the first verses of the first chapter of the Gospel of John. Uh, and uh, if you'll remember, there isn't any fancy Christmas story with angels or magi. Uh, and mo more and more scholars believe that, that they had those stories perhaps already in Luke. And so that's why John doesn't retell the story. Instead, he dwells on uh, this understanding of the incarnation that uh, that God that Jesus wa was with God and Jesus was God, so that so that that you have uh, God not only in human form but but human and uh, and divine at the same time. This Jesus Christ. So that's the the first part of the story, setting us up uh, so that we begin to understand uh, what Jesus is as he. Um, uh, as he goes on and, and talks about, uh, about the I am statements, uh, and as it gives testimony to the love and uh, the, the grace of, of God. So that was last week. And uh, this week, uh, he, the, the chapter goes on and talks about John the Baptist and John the Baptist as the first witness to Jesus Christ. Now, in the Gospel of Luke, it talks about Mary meeting Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth uh, is already, uh, has been, uh, uh, is a woman, uh, uh, an, an older woman, uh, past the time of childbearing, uh, but who is miraculously given a child. Uh, and, uh, and and Mary comes to see her after the angel has talked to Mary, and uh, and and so uh, Mary shows up, and the child in um, in in Elizabeth's uh, tummy and womb leaps for joy. That's what that's what our scriptures say. Uh, and so uh, and 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 Elizabeth is inspired uh, and knows also that this, this child that Mary is carrying is actually the Christ, the Messiah, uh, the one who will be the Savior of the world. And so even uh, in his mother's womb, John is the first witness to Jesus Christ. And, and Jesus, uh, as we saw last week or the week before, goes on uh, to be in the carpenter shop and in the fullness of time when the time is right. Uh, he... Uh, goes out to, um, to, to, to start his ministry of teaching and healing uh, and then ultimately to give his life. Uh, and uh, where he goes first uh, is to John, to, to John the Baptist's movement uh, along the, the Jordan. Uh, and uh, he, he goes there uh, and, and he goes there as, as part of this movement, but nobody knows who he is outside of John. And you remember, John's part of the family, uh, and uh, Jesus uh, comes out and is, is with John the Baptist, uh, and then is uh, finally baptized by John. Uh, he says to fulfill all righteousness, uh, he, to, to say this is the will of God, and, and we will be righteous if we live up to this will of God. That's what Jesus says. Uh, but, but before that, we see John uh, baptizing, and the the authorities come out: the the chief priests, the Pharisees, the scribes, uh, come out and and challenge John. Uh, Who are you? Why are you baptizing? Why are you doing these things? And they say, you know, are you a prophet? Come, you know, come from God. Uh, and, and there was a belief that there would be a prophet out of, the, out of uh, Old Testament scripture. Uh, and, uh, and he goes, no, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness uh, to make way, uh, make, make straight the way of the Lord. Uh, that, his, that his testimony is not about himself, but is about the one who is to come. And, and he's referring uh, to, to Jesus Christ to give testimony, to give witness 
he, it says that, that he didn't just say it, he confessed it. And that word for confess uh, is uh, the word uh, for giving witness, that he would give witness to the, uh, the presence or the coming of the Christ. And uh, as we think about this, we think about uh, giving witness. You know, when we are called on as Christians, uh, as followers of Christ, uh, not just to, to, to uh, bask in the, in the grace of God, which is a good thing to do, but, but also to give witness to the Christ. We are called on to, to be those uh, who, who give witness. Uh, and and I, as I thought about that, I thought about all the times that that we don't give witness that 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 it doesn't it doesn't spread so what is what are some of those well well one of them is we just don't think the timing is right well you know i could say something but it's not the right time you know and um and sometimes we're moved to say something or to reach out and and help somebody give witness not only with what we say but give give witness uh with with what we do and uh, and sometimes we feel moved, and still we don't do it. For what? What reason? Why? Because maybe the time isn't right. It feels like the time isn't right. And uh, and I recently heard a story from another preacher, uh, uh, Rob Bell. He does uh, blogs and things. He's a Methodist pastor, uh, and he says that he was out uh, walking on the street. He likes to walk, and there was this huge racket coming from a car down the road. Uh, and, and so he stopped to listen. And what the racket was, was a young man in the front seat of, of this old car singing jingle bells at the top of his lungs. And what made this unusual was that it was in July. <laughs> and, uh, and he's singing jingle bells going through the, going through the streets of, uh, uh, of his hometown. You know, the timing might not have been right, but the message, uh, the message uh, was one uh, that that Rob needed to hear to remember uh, the joy of Christmas, to be reminded in the in the middle of the summer, uh, and if it was just this last year uh, in the middle of COVID, uh, that that we need to remember the joy, the joy that is ours. And so sometimes we say the timing isn't right, but the timing, of course, is always right to give witness to Jesus Christ. Uh, and I have another story. It came from my own life. We were uh, uh, in having coffee with uh, three other ministers, uh, and uh, we were um, uh, we were sharing. It was it was this time of year. It was Advent, uh, and we were. Uh, talking about uh, about ethics, probably also talking uh, about the incarnation, the very thing we talked about last week, because it was this time of year. Uh, and so we were having coffee together, uh, and we were talking, we were reading books together, so we were in deep theological uh, conversation about ethics. Uh, and there was a, a, a woman who came in, a young woman, uh, barely older than a teenager, very ragged clothing. She got a, a simple cup of coffee uh, and went over to the corner, and I smiled at her and nodded, and we went on with our discussion. And she sat in the corner drinking her coffee out of the wind and cold, uh, sipping on it. And it wasn't until hours later that I thought about that. And I thought... Here was someone who who was hungry, uh, barely uh, barely clothed in the cold winter, and I could have so easily gone over and gotten a muffin for her, or something, and instead I did nothing more than smile. And uh, and 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 it was a missed opportunity. It was. Uh, had I thought about it, I would have gladly bought some bought some food for her, but she didn't ask, and I didn't think. 
and how often our opportunity to witness slips by and we just miss it. We just don't, don't think. And, uh, you know, in, in uh, Matthew, uh, Jesus says, when you've done it for the least of these, you've done it for me. I had the opportunity to put something in Jesus' stocking that year. And I let that opportunity pass by. We are called on to witness. Uh, and called on to witness at all times. And called on to be aware of the possibilities for being the witness. John the Baptist was out in the wilderness and giving a testimony that was so strong, people came out from Jerusalem, which would be far to the south, and all of Judea coming to see him and to hear uh, his, his testimony. We are called on to be the ones who give testimony for our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, another story. Uh, it comes out of The Lion King. In the, the, the movie and the play, uh, uh, Mufasa is the great king. His son is Simba. And uh, Simba's, uh, you know, little. And when Mufasa tries to save Simba, he dies. And Simba witnesses uh, the loss of his father, feels overwhelmed with guilt, and runs uh, off of the Serengeti into the jungle to hide. And he is there, runs into a couple of friends, of course. Uh, and uh, the story goes on, except that, uh, that, that he is now living a life that's not that of the king. You see, his father was the king. He was the one who was to take over for his father. And instead, he's, uh, he's hiding and uh, the the, ba the baboon, who's the uh, the the advisor to to kings, uh, named Rafiki, comes out to find him, and uh, he he says uh, that that uh, Simba has forgotten who he is, uh, and uh, there's of course a conversation, uh, and uh, he says uh, you uh, he, uh, uh, Simba says that, that his father is, is, um, is, is dead. And Rafiki says, no, your father is alive. And says, follow me. And they go, they go running through the jungle. And, uh, and they come to a, to a pond of water. And says, he says to Simba, look in. And Simba looks in. And he goes, uh, he says, that's just a reflection. And... Uh, he goes, uh, the, the baboon says, no. no. And he looks in and, and brushes the water. And uh, in the distorted water, Simba can see an image of his father, Mufasa, the great king. He has, he has a vision. And the vision speaks to him and says, you've, you've forgotten who you are. Uh, the vision says, you have forgotten me. And so you have forgotten who you are. And, uh, and, and Simba um, uh, uh, returns uh, to, um, to, to, to be the, um, the, the king of, of the pride land. Uh, and, uh, and that idea, you've forgotten who you are. And, and so sometimes our witness gets lost because the timing doesn't feel right. And sometimes uh, our witness gets lost because uh, we, we, we don't see the opportunity. But sometimes, sometimes our witness is lost because we have forgotten who we are. When Simba is running back to take his place. His father uh, tells him, you must take your place in the circle of life. 
we must take our place in the circle of life. And our place is to give witness to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in everything we say and everything we do. Amen. time now for the benediction. We have uh, looked at John the Baptist, seen that he was a witness, heard him call us to be witnesses to our Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is the Sunday of joy. We are called on to witness to the joy that is all of us, that is for all of us. Uh, the, the passage says, uh, that through Jesus Christ we have received uh, from, uh, from our great God, grace upon grace, that the joy is available. And, and as we witness, we are called on to, to help people to, to see, uh, to have their eyes open to the joy that is available to us all. 
So be a spreader of joy as, uh, as you go out into the world, wherever you might be, as you, uh, as, as you talk to friends and family. Be sure that you are spreading joy, that you might be a true witness to Jesus Christ. Receive this benediction. Let the joy of your Savior fill your life, fill you to overflowing, so that in all things you might be a witness to your Savior. Amen.